now in this one we will discuss eukaryotic cells. Uh, there are several differences between prokaryotic, prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, and here we will go through the differences. Our natural world also utilizes the principle of form following function, especially in cell biology, and this will become clear as we explore euk eukaryotic cells. Unlike prokaryotic cells, eukaryotic cells have a membrane-bound nucleus, numerous membrane-bound organelles, and several rod-shaped chromosomes. There's also a few other differences worth uh, mentioning or at least reminding is eukary eukaryotic cells tend to be, I think I said in the last video, like 500 times larger than prokaryotic cells. Uh, eukaryotic cells have a cell skeleton, cellular skeleton, which keeps everything in, making it, making it less squishy in a way, while uh, prokaryotic cells don't have that and tend to be more squishy. Eukaryotic cells tend to f tend to uh, bond with other s other eukaryotic cells, making it for a multicellular um, complex. While prokaryotic cells tend to be unicellular and are often their own animals. <coughs> Not to mention, prokaryotic cells tend to have uh, some kind of motor to them, such as a flagell such as a flagella or filly, or filli, I think it's as it's pronounced. While eukaryotic cells don't tend to uh, have have all that. At this point, it should be clear that you, to you that eukaryotic cells have a more complex structure than prokaryotic cells. Organelles also diff allow different functions to be compar compar compartmentalized, if I can speak properly, in different areas of the cell. Before turning to organelles, let's first examine two important components of the cell. The plasma membrane and the cell, the cytoplasm. And here is a good, um, here's a good chart on, uh, what each ma major organelle does. Here's a plant cell. That was an animal cell, this is a plant cell. Plant cells will tend to have a much more rigid cell wall. First we have the plasma membrane. Like prokaryotic cells, eukaryotic cells have a plasma membrane, a, a phospholipid bilayer with embedded proteins that separate the internal co contents of the cell from its surrounding environment, essentially like the skin. In fact, your, I, in fact the skin is actually a perfect uh, analogy because the way the, uh, fo if you remember from our lipids uh, video, the way the, uh, the, uh, phospholipids, uh, bilayer works is that it's what they call hydrophobic, which means that it's waterproof. That's, that's what waterproof means. Water stays on the outside because it's repelled by the same charges that, um, occupy these little phospholipid heads, while the stuff on the inside stays, uh, in, stays on the inside because, again, for the same reason. Uh... The plasma membrane will also have these proteins, which will help it communicate with, uh, with things on the outside. Then we have the cytoplasm, which is basically the goo inside the, uh, uh, inside the cell that everything kind of is suspended in, similar to the peritin inside you. The cytoplasm is the cell's entire region between the plasma membrane and the nuclear envelope, a structure we will discuss shortly. It is comprised of organelles suspended in the gel-like cytosol, the cytoskeleton, and various chemicals, even though the cytoplasm consists of 70 to 80 percent water. It has a semi-solid consistency which comes from the proteins within it. Proteins are not the only organic material in the cytoplasm. Glucose and other simple sugars, polysaccharides, amino acids, nucleic acids, fatty acids, and derivatives of glycerol are also there. Eons of sodium, potassium, and calcium are also in there as well. Then we have the nucleus, which is pretty much the center, like, I guess in essence, the brain, kind of, of the uh, cell. Typically, the nucleus is the most prominent organelle in the cell. The nucleus... Uh, the plural nuclei, houses the cell's DNA and directs the synthesis of ribosomes and proteins. And here is the structure of all of that. Here is the uh, Golgi complex, which we will talk about uh, later. Then we have the nuclear envelope. The nuclear envelope is a double membrane structure that consists of nucleus outermost portion, 411. Is that up here? Oh, my bad, sorry. The, 
Yeah, sorry, the Golden Complex looks like this, but it's out in the, I forgot about that. It's out in the, uh, in another region. This is the nuclear envelope. My bad. The nuclear envelope is punctuated with pores that control the passage of ions, molecules, and RNA between the, nu the nucleoplasm and cytoplasm. The nucleoplasm is the semi-solid fluid inside nucleus, where we find the cr chromatin in the nucleo- in the nucleo- you, the nucleolus. I always had- the nucleolus. I always had trouble saying that word. Then we have the chromatin and chromosomes. To understand chromatin, it's helpful to, to first explore chromosomes, structures within the nucleus that is that are made up of DNA. They had the heredity, the hereditary material. You may remember that in prokaryotes, DNA is organized into a single cellular chromosome. In eukaryotes, chromosomes are linear structure. Every eukary eukaryote eukaryotic species has a specific number of chromosomes in the nucleus of each cell. For example, in humans, the, chromo the chromosome number is 46, while in fruit flies, it is 8. Also worth mentioning that because they tend to be in pairs, uh, in humans, it's 23 pairs. Fruit flies, it would be 4 pairs. Then we have nucle the, nucleo the, the nucleolus. The nucleolus. We already know that the nucleus directs the synthesis of ribosomes, which we'll talk about in a minute. But how does it do it? Do this. Some chromosomes have sections of DNA that encode ri ri ribosomal RNA, a darkly staining area within the nucleus. It's called the nucleolus, or plural nucleoli. They aggregate the ri ribosomal RNA with associated proteins to assemble the ribosomal subunits that are then transported out. Through, through the pores in the nuclear envelope into the cytoplasm. Now we have ribosomes, which are the cellular structures responsible for protein synthesis. I would now say that's pretty important. When we view them through an electron microscope, ribosomes appear either as clusters, which we would call polyribosomes, or single, tiny dots that float freely in the cytoplasm. They may be attracted to plasma membranes a cytoplasmic side or the endoplasmic retic reticulum, cytoplasmic side, and and the nuclear envelope's outer membrane. Electron microscopes show us that ribosomes, which are large protein and RNA complexes, consist of two subunits, large and small, creative names. Ribosomes receive their order from for protein synthesis from the nucleus, where the um, DNA transcribes into messenger RNA or mRNA. The mRNA travels to the ribosomes, which translate the code providing, provided by the sequence of the nitrogenous bases, means nitrogen, uh, not nitrogen uh, fluid, uh, nit nitrogen consisting, in the mRNA into the specific order of amino acids in a protein. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, which we went over when we a few videos ago when we went over. Uh, of my, the four micromolecule, uh, macromolecules. Alright, for all you mean lords out there, <clears throat> next is the mitochondria. Now say it with me. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Good job. It is the powerhouse or energy factory of both plants and animal cells because they are responsible for making ATP or ad adenosine triphosphate. The cell's main energy carrying molecule. We will discuss in, res in respiration and uh, fermentation what exactly ATP is. For now, it's essentially ATP is what keeps everything moving and alive. Anything that requires energy is ATP. What ATP essentially is is a molecule that ha that will, when it's used, it will break off a um, a, a phosphate group making it a ADP, and that break is powerful enough to make pretty much any uh, tissue um, or uh, organ uh, system move, move and operate. Uh, and it just recycles respiration, uh, in, in respiration at least, when you breathe, the oxygen you get adds to that, uh, to the ADP to create ATP as the cycle. And we'll get into the details later on in the, in the, in the, um, in the class. But essentially mitochondria help create the ATP. It will often use ADP. 
and here it is in uh, here it uh, here's a good picture. It's about 200 nanometers, or a, uh, or a two two uh, two times times 10 to the power of negative nine uh, meters. It has the mitochondrial matrix, which is the main uh, part of the uh, of the organelle. There's the intermembrane album membrane, like a lot of internal, uh, organelles do, and then you have the Christi, Christe, I think. Uh, does it say here what exactly that does? Let's see if we can explain a little better. Mitochondria are overshaped double membrane organelles and have their own ribosome DNA. Each membrane is in a phospholipid uh, bilayer enabled, in, embedded with proteins. Okay, I believe the Christe arranges what is inside it. Oh, here we go. The inner membrane contains folds called cristae, which increases the surface area. Okay, so essentially, yes, it increases the surface area, which helps it um, perform functions. We saw in the last video, I believe, uh, why surface area in cells matters. Then we have the proxo proxisomes, which are small, round organelles enclosed by singular membranes. They carry out oxidation reactions that break down fatty acids and amino acids. And as we learned from previously, oxidation reaction is, I believe, uh when dehydration is when it's removing water i believe oxidation yeah is the opposite no no wait that's wrong oxidation is just uh is uh simply um adding a uh, uh adding a uh no removing an electron because reduction is reverse reduction is actually adding an electron so that's what that does uh, many of these oxidation reactions release hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, which would be damaging to cells. However, when these reactions are conf conf confined in uh, peroxisomes, enzyme safety bre safely break down the H2O2 into oxygen and water. Then we have the vesicles and va vacuoles. The vesicles and vacuoles are membrane-bound sacs that function in storage and transport. Other than the fact that vacuoles are somewhat larger than ves ve uh, vesicles, there are very subtle dif distinctions between them. Uh, va vesicle membranes can fuse with either the plasma membrane or other membrane system within the cell. Additionally, some agents such as enzyme within plant va vacuoles break down macromolecules, which if you recall are like fatty acids, uh, amino acids, proteins, etc. Then we have animal cells versus plant cells, which are very different actually. At this point, you know that each eukaryotic cell has a plasma membrane, cytoplasm, and nucleus, ribosomes, mitochondria, per 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 peroxisomes, and in some, vacuoles, but there are some striking differences between animal and plant cells. While both animal and plant cells have microtubule or organized centers, or, MTOC or MTOCs, that gets interesting when we get to that, animal cells also have cent centrioles associated with the MTOC. A complex we call the centrosome. Animal uh, animal cells ha each have a centrosome and lysosome. And some, I believe, means like area or something like that. Uh, whereas most plant cells do not. Plant cells have a cell wall, uh, a chloroplast, and other specialized plastids, and a large central vacuole area. Animal cells do not. So we have the centrosome, which is a tube, essentially. And each this entire thing is the uh, centrosome. Oh, sorry. Centrosome create these. The centriole, the centriole is this entire structure. And the microtubules are these little tubes here. The centrosome is a microtubule organized center found near the nuclei of animal cells. It contains a pair of centrioles, two structures that lie perpendicular to each other. Each centriole uh, is a cylinder of nine triplets of microtubules, or 27 tubules. The centrosome, the organelle where all uh, microtubules originate, repl re replicates itself before a cell division. And the centrosole, centriole, centrioles uh, appear to have some role in, putting, in pulling the duplicated chromosomes to opposite ends with the dividing cells. Which is true, when we get into cell division, I don't know when that will be, uh, there are photos that show that the centrioles are being created inside the cell, and they come kind of come outside the cell, then the then they seem like they kind of stretch, and then they wrap around others, like, wrap around each cell, and then it helps break it apart. Like, it's actually really interesting, but also kind of uh, complex, so I hope I remember it as well as, as I think I do. Then we have the lysosome. Animal cells have another set of organelles that most plant cells do not, the lysosome. 
which are the cell's garbage disposal. In plant cells, the, the, the digestive processes take place in vacuoles. Enzymes within the lysosome aid in breaking down proteins, polysaccharides, lipids, nucleic acids, and even worn-out organelles. And this is why I said in my previous video, um, when it comes to uh, prokaryotes, they don't they don't get rid of their waste because they are so malleable uh, that a lot of their waste just goes through them. However, due to things like this, the, the cytoskeleton uh, and the organelles themselves, eukaryotes cannot simply do that as things don't pass through them nearly as easily as uh, a prokaryotes. Then we have the cell wall which is not unique to uh, plant cells. And you can, and the cell wall is essentially why plants seem to have a very hard stem. Like the skin on animals, like skin on humans, it kind of is kind of soft, like the hard part is the bone. But if you feel the skin, the skin kind of gives in places. As you know, in, in many cell, uh, in many uh, plant areas, like the stem, the, uh, the uh, stem does not give very easily, it's very brittle. Or not very brittle, but very uh, rough and very hard to squeeze. And that is because of the cell wall. The cell wall is a rigid covering that protects the cell, providing structural support and gives shape to the cell. Fungi and some proto protistan cells also have cell walls. Uh, for a reminder, pro uh, a pro protist cell uh, is a single cellular or nearly single cellular uh, little animal. Now, similar bacteria, but not quite the same. And here is the structure of cellulose, which is the main, um, which is the the main uh, ingredient, if you will, uh, in the cell wall. I believe we go into more detail here when we get into, when we get into uh, flowers. Uh, sorry, plants. Um, a lot of this is basically, you know, introduction. We get into a lot more detail in later chapters. The chloroplast. Like, in, like the mitochondria, chloroplasts have their own DNA ribosomes, but chloroplasts have an entirely different function. They are uh, plant cell organelles that carry out photosynthesis, which again, we will go into more detail. The photosynthesis essentially is like reverse respiration. It takes energy from the, um, from the uh, sun, creates uh, sugars. Those sugars use the carbon dioxide that the, uh, that the plant uh, absorbs and release oxygen. This is a major difference between plant animals. Plants, autotrophs, which means they create their own food, um, are able to make their own food. Like sugars used in cellular respiration to provide ATP energy generated in plant mitochondria. While animals, heterotrophs, which means they get their, um, they get their uh, means of uh, food from other things, they call heterotrophs supposed to like homotrophs because they are not called cannibals. Cannibals would technically be homotrophs. Must ingest their food. Like mitochondria, chloroplasts have outer and inner membranes, but within either the space enclosed by the chloroplast inner membrane is a set of interconnected sac fluid filled membrane sacs called the th thyl thylakoids. Each thylakoid sac is a granum or grana. We call the fluid enclosed in the inner membrane of the s of that surrounds the grana the stroma. And here is the um, here is a very basic. Uh, cross-section of a, chl a chloroplast. The chloroplast contains green pigment chlorophyll, which is essentially what makes the plant green. This captures the sunlight, the, sun, the light energy that derives from reactions of photosynthesis. Like plant cells, photosynthetic protists also have chloroplast. And then we have the central, uh, central vacuole. Previously we mentioned that vacuoles are essentially components of plant cells. If you look at figure 48b, uh, 48B, 48B. Let's click on it and see where it takes us. Okay, here we go. B, yeah. Uh, the, uh, the central vacuole right here, this big thing. While in a animal cell, vacuoles are a lot smaller and they tend to be many. I don't see too many, I don't see any others in this thing, but, uh, cells will often have many. But in, um, plants, there's a big one. So let's go back over to where we were. Here we go. Okay, the central vacuole plays a key role in the regula regula in regulating the cell's concentration of water, in changing environment, 
natural conditions. Have you ever noticed that if you forget to water a plant for a few days, it wilts? That's because as the water concentration in the soil becomes lower than the water concentration in the plant, water moves out of the central vocule into the cytoplasm. As the central vocule shrinks, it leaves the cell wall unsupported. This loss of support to the plant's cell wall results in a wilted appearance. And that actually makes sense. If you think of the water, if you think of the central vacuole as a sponge, and it gets wet, it expands, which in turn presses against everything in the cell. But as it shrinks, there's less to press against, so everything kind of shrinks down. The central vacuole also supports the cell expansion. When the central vacuole holds more water, the cell becomes larger without having to invest considerable energy in synthesizing new cytoplasm. Because cytoplasm, because in animal cells, when they expand, it's because of the cytoplasm. But here, in plant walls, uh, plant cells, they don't have to do that because the sponge of the central vac vacuole absorbs water. And that is all we have to, uh, that is all we we're going to talk about today. Next video, we'll talk about the endomembrane system and proteins. Um, and this should be about, if I'm correct, this should be about how, a, basically, um, animal cell and plant cells, uh, eukaryotes, similar to how we have organ systems, each cell has an organ system too. And I think we're going to be talking about this particular um, system along with, I think, protein, either protein synthesis or just proteins flowing around. Uh, let's see if I can't, let's see if, no, not thumbnail. No, 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 no. Let's see if there's, like, a place I can find. Okay, I don't know where I can find my, uh, pages, but we can certainly talk about that next time. So, until the next lesson, thank you all very much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and God bless.